What's up guys, welcome to the vlog. Today, what we're gonna go over is an asymmetrical haircut that uh, you guys requested on Instagram. So I'm really excited to show you guys the end result. This is the cut that we did. You can see that nice hard line throughout the uh, left side of the haircut goes into a longer side, which makes it asymmetrical. And then we created all this fun layers and pieciness to the haircut. You can see that the asymmetrical line follows all the way through the back, also in the hairline. So I think you guys are really gonna dig this. We did a lot of different techniques that I know that you can use in the salon every day. So let me know in the comments below what you think of the cut and uh, like always, thank you guys so much for the support. Let's get started with our step-by-step. -step. Here we go. All right, guys, so we're gonna start off this vlog by parting the hair on the left-hand side. This is right where the guest parts her hair. And then as I get back towards the crown, I'm gonna shift into that mid-crown area and then take a diagonal forward line to directly behind the ear. What that's gonna do is I'm gonna section that off, clip it away. That's gonna be more of our closed off section. That's the section that we're gonna over direct back and push the weight towards the face. Now this side uh, is the weak side or, or the lighter density side. And what we're gonna do with this side is create more of a rounded shape around the head um, and more of a diagonal back feel opening up the face. So we're gonna open up the face on one side, close off the face on the other side, creating a really cool asymmetrical feel to this haircut. So we'll clip away the, the front half of the section. So what I was doing was kind of tossing the hair in my hand. What that does is I was looking for the natural fall of the hair. So once I saw where that hair was starting to kind of want to fall back off of the head, um, that's where I drew my line. So we could pretty much call it the division point uh, be between the front and the back. Uh, but just look for that curve of the head right behind the ear where it starts to shift towards the back of the head, and that's where you're going to split it. So we're going to start off cutting our guideline, um, so taking out about a half-inch section horizontally um, in the front temple area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine um, the angle that I want this haircut to go. So I wanted to do more of a... Uh, kind of open feel. So what I'm doing is shifting my finger angle so that the the back of my finger is aimed up a little bit more sitting right at the cheekbone area. And then I'm gonna work my way into the back of the head. Now what makes this technique definitely different than things I've done in the past is that we're gonna continue that line all the way through following the very top of the section. So we're following kind of through the occipital bone at this point, creating that asymmetrical feel, working um, diagonal back. And what that's gonna do is we're cutting our guideline for the entire bottom uh, of the haircut, or the basically the entire back of the haircut. So this is gonna be the guide for uh, everything above that section. It's also gonna be the guide for everything below the section. But what I love about doing it this way is it allows me to pick my length um, of how I want that uh, kind of asymmetry to feel in the back of the haircut. So now I'm gonna work through vertically just in the bottom part, um, the bottom section. You can see where we elevated that hair out horizontally. Now when I go through vertically, I just follow that line and take it tight into the nape area. This is something that and the bottom part of this haircut doesn't need to be perfect because, um, I mean, make it as perfect as you can, obviously. Um, but we're going to go through scissor over comb and really clean that up later uh, for this part of the section because I do want the nape of the neck to be a little tighter than I have it right now. Um, but with your fingers in there, it's a little bit harder to get in there. So I'm taking vertical sections, I'm combing, I'm scooping with the comb so that I'm pushing the new hair towards the guide, I'm never trying to move that, that guide towards the new hair. So just taking probably about half inch sections throughout, not trying to create too much over direction in the nape area and just bringing it back to the previous. So um, nice standard sectioning. The reason this will still have an asymmetrical feel is because I'm using my guide from the top. So that guide keeps getting longer because we already created an asymmetrical line in the back. So you can see I'm pulling everything straight out from the head. So now we've created that asymmetrical uh, part in the nape area. Now you can see kind of that, that longer hair towards the nape. That's all from um, the elevation that I had and how I was holding it in my fingers. So now I'm gonna go through and create a more standard line. I'm also gonna go through at the end of the haircut and, and redefine that line as well. So I, sometimes I just like to, to start the line so I can really visually see the haircut happening, um, but doesn't mean that that's my end result. Uh, until I'm actually finished with the haircut. 
All right, so now we're going to work our way up the temple area. What you uh, just saw was that I grab a little bit of the old hair for my guide and then a little bit of new hair uh, to continue the cut up the head. So I'm not grabbing that entire section. I'm not overdirecting everything straight down to the bottom. I am giving it a little bit of elevation. Let's call it a 45 degree angle because um, it's nice and soft uh, throughout this part of the shape. I am keeping a stationary guide though. So uh, there's a slight elevation. You can see in the diagram, it's about 45 degrees all the way up. But um, I am keeping that stationary guide because I do want to keep a nice weight line throughout the haircut. Uh, so just consistently working up the head, keeping that horizontal sectioning and building up that 45 degree angle um, for a nice standard graduation in the side. This is going to build my guideline for the rest of the back of the haircut. So I wanted to go through, cut the temple, get that exact length that I was looking for, make sure that that's right, and then continue into the back. All right, so now we're going to work into the back panel of the haircut. Now this is um, definitely a key part of this haircut. We want to keep a consistent weight line throughout the back. We want to create that asymmetry. So what I'm doing is taking a diagonal back line, following what we were already working with, um, about half inch thick. I don't like to go over a half inch thick if I'm cutting a precision cut. The reason for that is if you go over that, I believe it creates too much um, over direction in each section. So um, you end up with too much of a diffused guideline and uh, it just throws off the entire cut. So as I'm working through the back, I work with those half inch sections, sometimes smaller than that. Uh, you can see how thin that layer is of the hair that I'm cutting. And I just work my way through following that line. Um, creating that diagonal back line is what's helping us create this asymmetry. So as I work um, into the haircut, I start off a little bit higher, and then as I work around the head shape, my elevation drops and shifts into more of a uh, closed off shape. So like I said before, we're working diagonal back. That's going to help push the weight off of the face. So, um, But then as I move over towards behind the right ear, what's happening is that over direction is coming straight back and more of a diagonal forward. So the diagonal forward with over directing back is going to start closing off the face shape. So pushing that weight towards the cheek. So we started off on one side, pulling the weight off of the face, off the cheekbone, and then we get to the other side and we're actually pushing the weight forward. That's what's going to create this asymmetry. So it's all about the sectioning guys and just making sure that you take those small sections to keep a precise cut. So continuing diagonal back, um, working the head shape. Now this is where I want to show you some important stuff about a guide. So you have to make sure that you keep the same elevation throughout the haircut to keep a strong guide. So you can see how just that little shift in height of the elevation diffuses that line so much. So that's why a lot of people have struggles when they take a new section and they elevate the guide too much. They pull the guide from where it lives. And then what happens is it diffuses that guideline. You can't see it through the hair. And even though they can't see it through the hair, they continue cutting, and that's where you start to fail with creating your shape. So it's something that every single hair cutter struggles with, is making sure you have that nice, clean, strong line of a guide. But that's why you take thin sections. That's why you don't, um, you don't over direct the guide from where it lives. You pull the new hair towards the guide. That's what's going to help create um, more success in your hair cutting. So just... Again, continuing through, I know this part gets a little bit repetitive, but just look at the elevation. Um, understand that the, the guide, I want the guide to be nice and strong throughout the back. You can see that weight build up. What I love about hair cutting um, is that as I'm starting to round that head and I'm keeping my elevation similar to every section, you start to see the shape unfold. Um, if I were to follow that head shape more, I wouldn't get that buildup of weight. I love that buildup of weight throughout the haircut because it really shows off the head shape uh, really well in the crown area. So just working through, pretty much finished up that section. You could see that buildup of weight. I love the shape of the haircut so far. Now here's a couple things that happened in this cut. Um, first off, I continued through the backside. So I did section off a bit and I over directed everything back to that guideline, which you can see in the bottom right hand uh, head shape diagram. I continued through that right side and over directed everything back. Somehow the camera wasn't on and that's just the reality of trying to film a video all the time is that something's bound to happen and I didn't want to not put this haircut out for you guys. 
Now I continued into the top and I just over direct everything using the guide from our very first um, section. I just pull some of that up into it. it, gives me that shape that I'm looking for and I over direct the entire top over the parting to um, push some of that hair off the face. So I wanted to continue that kind of open feel of the layering and kind of open up the face no matter what, but I did, uh, but keeping the length on the one side. So you can see how the asymmetrical feel of the haircut just really works because we have um, the one side closing off, but it's opening all the way across the face. So I really dig this. Now we're gonna use our Ergo blow dryer and the Ergo paddle brush or uh, polishing brush to just go in, smooth out the hair, uh, create that shine. And then I switch to a Palmetrol 413 brush to give a little height and air to the haircut. And then I go in with my Vibrostrate iron and iron it out. Uh, using the comb and just tension in my fingers, working around that head shape um, and just really polishing out the hair so I can see the shape uh, of the haircut that I've created so far. All right, so now we're gonna start our dry cutting portion, a couple different techniques that I'm using. I, I'll put the point of the scissor, lift up some of the graduation, do a little scissor over comb just to soften it. Um, and now I'm gonna go through with the point of the scissor and just start to detail a line, that, the line that I was looking for. We talked about this before. Anytime you elevate the hair, you get a diffused outer perimeter line. So that's all done in the dry cut. So just going through, I'll shake the head, I'll move the hair, I'll recomb the hair, and just keep defining that line so that when my guest goes to style her hair, that line is always there um, and always looks good. And now we're gonna go through a little scissor over comb in the back just to tighten the back up a little bit, clean up the shape that we created. Um, it, there's nothing like going through vertically with your fingers, cutting um, the shape in the back, and then going through horizontally with scissor over comb to kind of uh, cross check it and clean up the shape that you've cut. So you're kind of hitting it from all different angles to get that perfect feel to the back. Now I'm gonna, I told you I was gonna redefine that back line going through with my blunt cutting. Uh, we're using the DB20 scissor. I've been using the entire cut. Um, everybody asked me, I got another email this morning, what's your favorite all around scissor? DB20 Mizutani scissor is the way to go. It's on ShopFSE or freesaloneducation.com if you guys want to uh, check it out on there. Uh, we have it for sale, but uh, awesome scissor. Love it for everything that I do. And uh, it's really good for dry hair because it has nano powder metal steel. What that means is that it's a really soft metal, so it grips the hair as it's cutting. So no hair slips at all uh, when you're cutting your lines. So it's great. I can go through and I can cut an entire section and it's a perfect straight line every time. Moving into the top of the head, I'm gonna take horizontal sections and just over direct them straight up to create a lot of uh, light airy layers in the haircut, just removing some of that weight from the heavy side because um, we know that we part on the side I'm standing. So the rest of the haircut is all heavy on that side. So what I wanna do is just go in and take out some of that weight. Now I'm gonna connect the front. So again, we elevated the hair to create this angle that we have currently in the front of the haircut. But now we got to go through and uh, define our outer perimeter because, again, when you elevate the hair, it will create the shape on the interior of the haircut. But that outer perimeter line, you still need to go through and define it. Still using my DB20 scissor. You could use a dry cutting scissor for this. I like dry cutting scissors for more slide cutting techniques and things like that. When I'm working for precision cutting, I go in with my DB20. So I did kind of comb off the disconnected part because I didn't want to cut that shorter. I kind of pushed it off to the side and then I worked my way up the head shape to create that little bit around um, the right cheek area because I wanted to keep that defined line going but then disconnect the very front. We're going to do the same layering technique that um, we did just a little bit ago. The only difference in this part is I make sure that I leave out the length and then I go in and I really start chopping at it because I want to create a ton of texture on the side. And this is where you get a lot of freedom in dry cutting. So I kept a lot of length. I over directed this entire top to the other side to cut it wet. 
And now when I cut it dry, I want to really go in there, remove a lot of bulk and create a lot of texture in the cut, which gives it its own personal feel. Um, and it doesn't destroy the shape that we've created. So almost there, another horizontal section, over directing everything up, really deep point cutting. And there you go. Now a little more point cutting. So what I did was I took a vertical section on the side. So that kind of heavy uh, panel that was in the front can get a little dog ear feeling. We all know that uh, what that is. That was from over directing everything straight back and closing off the face. But we did push all of the weight to the front. So now I just go in and I hold it with a little less elevation just to soften uh, the edge. Then I always go through and I call it's like reactivating my haircut. I go through and I just do a little quick flat wrap with the uh, 413 brush, which kind of gives a little bit of air and lift, gets out all the loose hairs, and there's our end result with it smooth. And now I want to go in and show it, show you guys what it looks like when you add the texture to it. So we're going to use our Bricado medium hold hairspray, but uh, you can see without even putting hairspray in it how much movement and texture goes in there. But if they want kind of like an all day hold, and actually I think I use the firm hairspray. Yeah, it's got the black top. So firm hairspray just to hold it in place, get my Instagram photo and all of that. But uh, I hope you guys like this cut. Definitely let me know in the comments below. And also if you like any of the tools that I was using and you're looking to upgrade your tools, definitely check out everything that we have to offer on freesaloneducation.com. All right, guys, like always, if you like this haircut, then hit that like button, hit the share button. Let me know in the comments what you think. And also, if you made it this far, you have to go join FSE Social, which is our new community part to our website, um, where you can talk to other hairdressers, ask us questions. I'm on there all the time. So go friend request me on there. And I would love to see your guys' work and your questions and getting involved. And I love everybody that's already on there, already interacting and uh, getting involved as well. So thank you guys so much for that. And I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks.